What's going on guys? Welcome back. Thank you for watching. Today's video idea was actually inspired by a viewer who reached out to me on Instagram. I know a lot of you guys think I don't read comments or check DMs, but trust me, I'm always down there. So if you have a good idea, put it down below or hit me up on IG. But in today's video, we are testing the theory that the 5.7 by 28 might just be the ultimate caliber for apartment home defense. So we've talked about home defense and self-defense a lot on this channel. We even made a video several years ago testing house walls to see how good they were at stopping bullets. But one area we have not covered is apartments, hotels, motels, and just close living quarters in the city. And today, I think we have the test. Now, when you're talking about a house, bullets have a lot more to get through to exit the house. Drywall, insulation, wood, siding, etc. Then it has to go through all that stuff again to get into your neighbor's house. In apartments, it's literally just a couple layers of drywall separating you from your neighbors. Maybe some insulation, if you're lucky, the bullet will hit a stud, but that's not likely. So obviously over penetration is a much bigger concern. And since the 5.7 is such a lightweight bullet, we're gonna see how it handles this. And to do this test, I have 12 layers of drywall lined up on the table here. I assume this will be enough to stop bullets. I really don't know. The drywall is kind of a weird one, but each wall in an apartment would be two of these. So that is all that's separating you from your neighbor. There might be some insulation in there, which isn't gonna do anything to stop bullets. So we're just using drywall to keep it simple. And I'm gonna hit these with a few different calibers and we'll see what they do. So the 5.7 by 28 is kind of a controversial little caliber and it's not one that I would usually recommend because there are better options out there. It's a tiny little bullet, typically between 27 and 40 grains and it just doesn't pack the punch that some other calibers do. But in this one application where over penetration is a huge concern, I think the 5.7 might rule. I could be wrong though. And the gun we're using today is also part of this apartment self-defense equation, and that is the FN PS90. So the PS90 or the P90 is a cool one because it's obviously a bullpup, which makes it smaller and easier to use in tight spaces. If you have the SBR, they're even smaller. Unfortunately, we don't, but there are benefits to the longer barrel. Number one is velocity. And with the 5.7, velocity is everything. So. We'll see how it does. All right, we're gonna start with just the drywall and we will shoot the 5.7 first. I have a few different rounds that we're gonna test to see which one stops the quickest. First up, we have the 40 grain blue tip. Probably the most popular 5.7 out there. Let's see how many layers of drywall it takes to stop this thing. Any predictions? That's a lot of dust coming my way. <laughs> and this is exactly what I was afraid of. It went through every single one of those and came out the back right there. Okay, I have one more 5.7 that I wanna try and if that does the same thing, I'll probably end up putting some layers of wood in between our drywall because this ain't gonna show us anything. And next up, we have the 27 grain green tip 5.7 and this is the one that I really wanted to test because it's the lightest weight 5.7 out there. It's also a lead-free bullet that defeats body armor. So this is most people's favorite when it comes to this caliber. Let's see what it does. I have a feeling it went through all of them. All right, I put the green tip 5.7 just a few inches above the blue tip, and it's kind of cool. As you walk further down the line, you can see those bullets starting to keyhole as it passes through the drywall. And our green tip, funny enough, went all the way through 11 and then stopped at the 12th. So you can see there's no exit hole and there's a little dent where the bullet hit that piece. And then laying on the ground right beside our table is our green tip 5.7. Fully intact, definitely deformed a little bit, but I think that's the first time I've ever recovered a 5.7 intact like that. Well, we definitely proved that the lighter weight bullet does penetrate less. No surprise to most of you, I'm sure, but I think I'm gonna have to introduce some wood 
end of this test. Otherwise, they're all just gonna blow right through and we won't learn anything. I went ahead and grabbed these one inch pieces of wood and I'm gonna place these right behind our first layer of drywall and our third layer of drywall. And we'll try the green tip again since we know this one does penetrate the least. Let's see what it does. All right, I put that one right there towards the top. I'm trying to save as much of this drywall as I can so we can complete the entire test, but that one actually went through both pieces of wood. Hopefully you can see that exit hole right there. And then after that, it started curving pretty quickly up and to the right. And the last bullet hole that we have is on drywall piece number seven. There is nothing on number eight. So I assume it curved out the top and missed all the others. So we'll try it again and see if we can bring the bullet down a little bit. And I went ahead and introduced two more pieces of plywood. So now on the first four layers, we have wood behind the drywall. Hopefully this will slow the bullet down. Let's see. All right, that one went in right there, and now we're finally getting somewhere. So it went through the first four layers with wood. You can see that big exit hole there into our fifth layer of drywall and then stopped at number six. So I'm gonna try to get behind here so you can see there is no exit hole from that bullet on our sixth layer of drywall. And that is where it went in right there. And laying on the table in between our drywall, I found our green tip 5.7. It looks pretty much identical to the first one that we shot. So I would say six is a good baseline we can actually work with. So this is what we'll use to test our other calibers. All right, next up, we'll go ahead and try the nine millimeter. This is a very common self-defense caliber. It's also like five times the weight of the 5.7. So we are using a hollow point, which most people would use for home defense. And we're shooting it out of the Beretta M9A3. Remember, this is just the bare drywall test. We are going to do other stuff after this as well. So. Let's see what it does. <laughs> I got some wood shrapnel flying at me. Let's see how it did. And there's where the nine millimeter went in. You can see how much bigger it is than all the five sevens that we shot. And I assume it also pass through our four layers of wood. You can see that big exit hole right there. Entrance hole on drywall piece number five. It looks like it's also key holing. Entrance hole on number six. Exit hole on number six. And there's our bullet. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So there's our nine millimeter hollow point. It looks like it stopped at number seven. There's a dent down there on the bottom but it did not go through. So actually not as much of a difference as I was expecting. One layer of drywall is all that separates the 5.7 from the nine millimeter. But what's most important is what happens after the bullet passes through and hits a target on the other side, which we will test here in just a second. But first, let's try one more caliber. All right, next up, we'll go ahead and try the 5.56. Also a very common self-defense caliber, 55 grain bullet. Let's see what it does. Smoky. It's starting to get super windy out here, so I apologize for that, but you can see where the 5.56 went in right there. I tried to put that one a little bit lower, and it looks like it also went through all of our pieces of wood. And once again, pretty much immediately started keyholing, and the 5.56 went all the way through all 12 layers. So there's the exit hole right there. The only other one that went through all 12 was the blue tip at the beginning of the video before we brought the wood in. So there it is, the 5.7 went through five, the nine millimeter went through six, and the 5.56 went through all 12. Let's try some other tests. All right guys, the final test we're gonna do today is to see if, God forbid, you did have a round over penetrate your wall, how much damage would it do on the other side? And to do this test, we have a 16 inch block 
of clear ballistic shell. We're gonna shoot through our wood and drywall layers, and then we'll see what the bullet does in our ballistic shell block. And for this one, I'm just using the first two layers of wood and drywall. This would be equivalent to one wall in an apartment building or even inside of a house. So the scenario is you just sent around through your wall and the neighbor or your family member in the next room is chilling on the couch watching Netflix. How much damage would it do? Let's find out. Green tip 5-7. Obviously this would apply to apartment buildings or even inside of a house, like your family members in the next room, stuff like that, so. I just hope we get the bullet in the ballistic shell. All right, we actually got that one in the ballistic shell. Hopefully you guys can see it. It is so bright out here, I can't even see the screen on my camera. But probably two inches in, we have a pretty good little wound cavity and then the bullet penetrated to about seven or eight inches into our ballistic shell block. So it did get a little penetration. The FBI recommends 12 to 18 inches of penetration in ballistic shell. So somebody probably could survive a shot like that, but it wouldn't be good. That's for sure. Now we'll go ahead and try the nine millimeter, same bullet, 124 grain hollow point, Beretta M9. We're gonna try to put this one in between. Nice. And there is our nine millimeter in the ballistic shell block. It looks like it penetrated almost twice as far as the 5.7 did. So I don't know about you, obviously I would not wanna be shot with either of them, but if I had my choice, I would take the 5.7 over the nine millimeter any day. You're probably not surviving that nine mil. That's a lot of penetration. And the 5.56, also one of my favorites. Let's see how it does. I'm gonna to try to put it just a little bit to the right. went too low. It actually didn't go too low. Interesting. Well, I saw the cinder block break and I just assumed that the bullet went low, but it actually went straight into our ballistic shell block. So hopefully you can see that 5.56. It is right next to our nine millimeter. It looks like it penetrated maybe one inch less, but they're pretty much in the exact same spot. And again, the 5.7 is all the way back here, so. The 5.7 definitely won that test as far as over penetration is concerned. And although the 5.56 and the nine millimeter did stop in about the same spot, they're clearly not the same. Number one, the 5.56 destroyed the cinder block, which is absolutely crazy. And number two, it launched the ballistic shell off the table, which the nine millimeter definitely did not do. So if I was gonna be shot with an over penetrating bullet, I would go 5.7, nine millimeter, and then 5.56 in that order. Now, up to this point, our tests have kind of implied that you missed your target and the bullet just went directly into the wall, which does happen quite a bit. But next up, I wanna do the exact same thing, but this time with a watermelon in front of it. Now, this is not here to resemble a bad guy, obviously, but it is a soft, dense target that our bullets can go through so we can see how they destabilize, break apart, and over-penetrate after going through something like this. Plus, it's a consistent target that we can use for each gun. So let's find out. Okay, I put wood on the first two layers. Other than that, it's just drywall. Start with the 5.7. It's a little bit more damage than I expected on the watermelon. And you can see on the very first layer of drywall, that bullet was already completely sideways. And there's our entrance hole right there. The bullet was already turned completely sideways by the time it hit that first piece of drywall. And then on the back, there is an exit hole right there. And it stopped. <laughs> so there's a dent in our first piece of wood right there, but it did not come out the other side. And then on our second piece of drywall, you can clearly see that there is no entrance hole. 
So that watermelon made a big difference. It didn't even go through one wall after passing through the watermelon. Kind of interesting. Okay, nine millimeters, same exact test. Same bullet, by the way. Straight through. Now, this one is surprising to even me. So let's get this watermelon out of there and you can see the entrance hole behind it. And then if we go over here, obviously it went through the first piece of wood, second, third, and continued all the way through all 12 pieces of drywall and exited right there at the bottom. And if you get at the right angle, you can kind of see the downward trajectory of that bullet as it passed through those last six or seven pieces of drywall. So it was definitely dropping, but it went through every one of them. Very interesting and even bigger difference than I was expecting. And as you can see with the 5.7, all it takes is a little bitty watermelon to completely destabilize that bullet and basically stop over penetration where the nine millimeter just kept going and blew through the entire thing. So big difference. And last but not least, we got the 5.56. This is a slightly smaller melon than the first two. Don't make fun of me. It's all they had at the store, so. I had to buy it. I think this one might actually destabilize quicker because it is a rifle round. They're designed to tumble and not penetrate quite as much. So let's see what it does. That thing is loud. And there's the entrance hole right there. That is definitely the gnarliest of the three. That's a pretty big hole for a little 5.56. So the watermelon definitely did something to the bullet and it clearly went through the first one. There's the entrance hole in the second one. That's the hole that I'm looking at right there in the middle. And into number three, number four, number five, number six, seven, it's starting to curve up. It's also starting to keyhole a little bit. That is number eight. Nine, really keyholing now. 10, 11, and on number 12, we just have a dent. So it did not go through number 12, but it did go through number 11. And oh my God, that, is our bullet. It's still warm <laughs> and fully intact. It's not very often you get to recover these 5.56s because they just go crazy when they hit these kind of targets, but there it is. Pretty cool. So this proves a couple different things. Number one, that rifles do not always over penetrate more than handguns, like a lot of people think. As we saw, the nine millimeter went through all 12 and the 5.56 only went through 11. I know it's not that big of a difference, but it is still relevant. And the second thing this proves is that the 5.7 is in a league of its own when it comes to over penetration. It literally stopped in the first piece of wood. The other two went through 11 and 12 pieces of drywall. And of course it's not as powerful as the other two, but when it comes to over penetration, I would say the 5.7 is one of the safest calibers out there because it really doesn't over penetrate. All right guys, hope y'all enjoyed the video on the 5.7 by 28 and the FN PS90. Obviously I had to improvise a little bit with the drywall. I did not think the bullets would go through all 12 layers, but obviously that stuff is just very easy for bullets to get through. So I added some wood. I would say that is still realistic because they use wood all the time when building houses, apartments and stuff like that. So either way, it's obviously, you know, no secret that the 5.7 is not the most powerful caliber out there. And if your goal is defeating barriers, shooting through walls, doors, cars, stuff like that, I would not recommend the 5.7 or the PS90. But if you live in an apartment, hotel, motel, even in a house with other family members and you want to minimize over penetration, I do think it's a pretty good caliber. 
it's effective enough, not the most effective, but it would get the job done and dramatically reduces over penetration. So I'm a fan. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. As always, I'd be glad to hear from you. If you like the video, please hit the like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.